my name is Renske Smits. Um, I'm originally Dutch. Um, I did my undergrad and my PhD in physics and astronomy in uh, Leiden in the Netherlands. Um, and then after my PhD, I applied for a job uh, everywhere in Europe and I got a couple of offers, but I chose to go to Durham. Um, so we're about 13.4 billion years back in time, we can see. So we often measure distance by uh, the number of light years you go back in time. So that's only 400, um, about 400 million years after the Big Bang. So it's pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> There's many factors to what makes um, a good telescope. So for Hubble, why it's so famous is um, it was the first telescope in the optical that we uh, put into space. And until then, we always were um, limited by our own atmosphere. And so the atmosphere blurs our images and also makes it very difficult to see very faint things. Um, and so once Hubble started working, um, for the first time we could see these incredible detailed images and very, very faint things. The successor to Hubble is going to be the James Webb Space Telescope. And so what um, James Webb is going to have that Hubble doesn't have um, is cameras farther in the infrared. Um, so because the universe expands, as we look at things that are further away, they also move faster away from us. Um, and that means that um, due to the Doppler effect, we see them redder. There's like a, a reddening of the light. And so um, the further away you look, the redder the light is. And so at some point, if you go far enough back, everything moves to the infrared. And so that is where the limitation of Hubble is now. You cannot look further um, than the reddest light that Hubble can receive. And so yeah, it's very exciting. James Webb is going to go, it's going to be launched in 2018. Um, and that hopefully will find the very, very first stars. If you could look into the future of science and see what we found out, what would be the first thing you'd, you'd want to know? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe if there is life on other planets. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's not a topic that I actually work on myself, but it's still something that I think, um, because it's coming and I think we will find out in our lifetime, it's something it's very big for our society to realize we're not alone. I think that is going to be a big thing. What we look for is planets, first of all, that are rocky, like the Earth. You can actually stand on, like Jupiter is not much use to us. Um, but then it also has an atmosphere. And then um, once you've detected it has an atmosphere, what you're basically looking for is oxygen. Um, oxygen, like we have in our atmosphere, depletes quite quickly. So it needs to be regenerated continuously by plants. So um, the easiest way to know that there's life on another planet is to look for that iconic signature of plants, which is oxygen. And, you know, you can make a pretty good guess that once there's plant life, there, there could also be other life out there. I mean, that's the thing. Once you're beyond characterizing the atmosphere and looking at what elements are there, and therefore that is when you have to derive what can make those elements, right? We won't be able to see the life itself or see its impact on the atmosphere. Um, and so, yeah, then it's, we'll, we'll have to launch something there. Well, you know, that's, that's another, maybe that's going to take a few hundred years, you know, that might not happen in our lifetime, but um, it is mainly finding, finding the planets that you know, we can make a lot of progress on in a short time scale. We think, if you look at how the progression is and how many planets we find, how many planets there are around other stars, um, how rapidly the technology is evolving and, you know, finding characterizing their atmospheres, it is, you know, it's very likely we'll find it life in our game.